We now have reached chapter 4. And let's jump on the computer so I can explain you how the Final Cut Pro interface work. So here we are on my Final Cut Pro project, the one I'm working on right now, the video you're looking at right now. And we're going to see all the options we have on that interface. But first of all, we're going to make sure we have the same interface because there's a lot of things you can change on that interface. So to make sure of that, I will ask you to come here on Window and go down to Workspaces and select default because if for example you are on color and effect you might have something that look like this and it will be totally different so window workspaces and default you can add many things if you want you can go here and show in workspace and select what you want to see you can save a workspace if you have one that you build for your own taste but personally i only use color and effect and default so I select that. The first part that we will see is the media box. The media box is that part just over here. What do we find here? There is three subsection. There is the first one that we're going to see just right now, which is the library sidebar. So we already saw that what we have on that left column is the library and if we hit that arrow we can see everything that is inside for that example the one that i'm working on right now the auto 2023 i have on top like we saw earlier my project and under that we've got all the media that i have imported i didn't put them into that section as soon as i put something on my timeline lower here it had it automatically to the project over here for that kind of project i don't need to create event or something like this i just work with my library and all my projects are following each other then if we pass to the next subsection we've got this one in which we can find some stuff that is connected to final cut so there is the iPhoto library that there's nothing here because I don't use iPhoto. You've got iTunes, you've got Apple TV. I don't know exactly what this is and I don't know why there is stuff inside that. But anyway, I don't use that. The only one that I use is the sound effect over here. Some might be included with your Mac. I don't think there is any sound effect that come with Final Cut. But if you have something like GarageBand or uh, maybe another software from Apple to create music, you might have some effect over here. So everything is inside here. I can select an effect and drag it over here and it's now on my timeline or you can search for i don't know police and you're gonna have everything that is related to police you can add some effect into that and if you want to know how to do it i will link a video in the description if you want to know how to add music inside that section now we're going to pass to the next one it's it is the title and effect uh, you will probably realize that there is a lot more of title than on your final cut. It is because I have purchased some of them. The one that come with it by default look like this. You have a lot of... Uh, really, you don't want to use that kind of stuff. So the only title that I use that come with it is inside bumper opener and it's the basic title so it's just a basic title it's this one over here i can type something else inside here i can change the font i can uh, play with its position it's i can play with its size I can do those kind of thing. I can put drop shadow if I want. I can play with the opacity. I can do all those kind of stuff, but that's the only one that I use because I think the other one are very immature. The only other thing that I use is at the very lower section inside solid. 
and it's the custom solid over here. So if I had that, well, as you can see, it's a black background. So I could take that title and set it over here to got something like this. Or sometime I will just use it to create a blank to let me remember that I have something to add just like here. You see I have my stuff and boom, there is that black bar. So like that, I'm sure to remember that I have something to put or there's a ton of, of use of that. And also, if you click on it, you can change the color. So that's the custom solid background. Otherwise, the background that come with it with Final Cut look terrible. They look like this. You will never use that. Please don't use that. Don't use that. It looks terrible. If you want to have great background title or effect, I will link a video in the description. And with that, you will see all the effect that I use, all the title that I use, and you'll be able to purchase it too if you want. So that was for the media box. And the next part is the viewer bar. So basically, the viewer bar is that one, the one where you see your project when you're moving on the timeline. So there is a couple of things that you can do over here. First one that we're going to see is inside here. You see here the percentage. I always set it to fit when I'm working on my timeline and I want to see what's happening. But sometime you might want to switch to 25 or 12 and a half percent. That could be if I don't know, there is that title that I put over here, that move over there. If I want to get it back, I can take it and put it back. That is just an example. But there's a lot of situation where you need to put your screen smaller so you can see what is around. Uh, otherwise, you can also increase it up to 600% if you need to do something very precise and you can move on that frame using that you see that little red square so you can move that square to any corner of the frame and well if you have something very precise to do that's the way to do so i'm gonna set it back to fit and then you got here inside view you can add a show title action save zone this one what is the use of that Let's say that I take that title one more time here and I want to put it at this place. Well, if you are working for a project on web, well, that may be fine. I'll set it on the other side because it's white on white. That look great. That's all right. But the use of that is that if you're doing something for TV, it says that it's not safe because as soon as you go the other side of that green bar, it is for sure that you won't see it on a TV because a TV always crop that frame outside and may even go even further. So if you are going on TV, you must go there. Might look fine actually, but if I remove that frame, it look terrible for the web. So web TV, different kind of project. And you also got that show title, uh, no show horizon like that might be helpful for something. Well, the option is there. And finally, we've got the most important section. It's the inspector. The inspector is a bit like the menu bar of the Mac. This means that actually I'm on Final Cut. If I and if I go on the menu bar, I've got all the option of Final Cut. But if I go on Spotify here, I've got all the option of Spotify. And when I come back to Final Cut, I've got all the option of Final Cut. So the inspector will always show you the option of what you have selected. Actually, there's nothing selected, but I'm on that frame and that frame represent that clip. So we've got the option of the clip. If I go over here, it's still a clip. But if I select the title, I've got the option of the title. If I go here and I select the project, 
I've got the option of the project. So if I select oops, this one, this clip, actually, I'm going to do it on another project because I don't want to ruin the one I'm working on right now. So I have that frame and there's some sub section of the menu bar. So the first one is the video inspector. Here I can play with the blend mode. Let's say that I put something over that and I play with the blend mode. Well, as you can see, it blend. There's different kind of blend, but that what it does. And then what do we have? We've got the opacity so we can play with the opacity. Actually, it's just going dark because there is nothing under it. But if I take a title and I play with its opacity here, opacity, well, you see it play with the opacity. You can play with the position of the frame. You can play with its rotation. You can play with the scale. You can play, uh, you can crop it from the left, from the right, the top, the bottom. You can also desort your clip if you want to do it. We never use that, but you can do it. <laughs> and then we go to the color inspector. Here, when you go inside that part, you can go in Window, Workspace, and go on Color and Effect. And remember those shortcuts if you want to change it very quickly. So by having this here, I've got that graph, those graphs that help me to play with the exposure. If I want to balance it right, I've got the general exposure. So that changed everything. That one only changed the darker part. That one changed the middle part and that one changed the brighter part. You can play with the saturation and it's the same principle with those dot on the left. And you can also play with the color. You can also change of kind of board you've got a color wheel and this one let you play well like that with the mid-tone that was the word i was looking for before you can play with the temperature you can play with the tint so that's another feature and you can also play with curves and just play with that you're gonna find a lot of stuff then we also got the audio inspector this one you can play with the volume uh, if you had an effect, so if I had that limiter over here, you can see that my limiter go here and I can play with the gain and all the effect that come with the limiter. It's the same principle for the video. If you had an effect, so let's say that I had a blur, a caution blur over here, I will see that caution blur get here and I can play with the effect over here. I will delete it. The last option will be that one, which is the info. So it's the info inspector. And we can see a couple of things about that clip. If I go back to my default workspace, comment A, that's my shortcut on my keyboard. If I select the project, I can see the detail of the project and I can also go on modify to modify the frame rate or the resolution, those kind of things can be changed here. So very important part, the inspector. Remember, it's like the menu bar of Final Cut. If you are looking to modify something, it's probably in the inspector. Oh, and that's not it for the inspector. As we have just saw, there is those four options, but you might see some other one in some situation. For example, if I take that title and I set it just right here, well, in the inspector, we now have two other options. The first one is this one, the title inspector. In this one, we will find a lot of option about that title to edit that title. Uh, we can talk about the text, the size, the position of it. Uh, Sometimes there is uh, animation options. There is a lot of options and the other one is very text specific in fact it's the text inspector so on that one if you select a text you can 
modify it you can change the font the size the alignment the baseline you can set it to all caps those kind of options you can also play with the position the rotation the scale and if you go at the very bottom you can add drop shadow glow outline those kind of things there is a lot of options inside that too and it's not impossible that you may find some other inspector in some situation with other kind of stuff so if you need to modify something never forget to take a look at the inspector it's probably there that video was only a chapter of a bigger video about video editing with final cut and you can see it just right there hey see you there see ya